Hi everyone. Today we're going to continue with our Revit for Beginners series. We're going to be talking about architecture and Revit basics. This is the second part of this series. To my intermediate and advanced subscribers, please be a little patient. Not everybody was as lucky as you to start a long time ago. But I have something really good cooking for you, so stay tuned. We're going to be creating some interior walls. We're going to dig into the properties of a wall. We're also going to be editing a wall type and we're going to really get into the structure of a wall and figure out what's going on in there. We're going to reinforce the type properties versus instance properties concept, which is one of the fundamental concepts in Revit. I'm going to show you how to add and position doors throughout. We're going to be creating some column grids and we're going to talk about annotated text. So this is Alex with BIM it up. See you in Revit. All right, so let's play a little bit with Revit. Uh, let's start drawing some walls just to get some practice. So I'm going to click here on wall and let's use this basic wall, generic five inches. And let's start, let's say here right and I'm gonna take it all the way up to like around here just as an example and then I'm gonna turn here I want to show you that this let, let me drag this a little bit so let's see if we find something a little bit more similar to this so let's scroll down and we have this uh, four and seven eighths interior partition Mm, it's getting a little closer. I noticed that I, I kind of like that because this would be a corridor. Again, this is not an architectural course, so we won't spend too much time on this. It's, but I, I kind of like this one, right? Interior, four and seven eighths. I can do tab select, and then both of them, I can change to that four and seven eighths partition. Uh, but it's still not quite where I want it to be, right? So. Uh, let's click on it and let's go to edit type and then if you go under structure and hit edit Then here's where the real thing is happening You see that the structure the metal studs are three and five eighths of an inch and Then the finish, you know the planks of a wall are five eighths each So let's say I want to change that from five eighths to half inch so I could come here and modify this to half inch and I want you to take a look at this preview pane here so if I click outside, see how it changed? This one remained 5 eighths. So let me change that to half inch as well. All right, so here it is, half inch. When I click outside, boom, it changed. Now I click OK, OK. And now, you know, the wall changed and it's pretty close to what I want. But notice that this wall, if I click on it, it still says 4 and 7 eighths. And it's not 4 and 7 eighths anymore. Not only that this wall changed but also this wall changed because it was under the same type four and seven eighths so let's click undo and let's do the right thing i'm gonna do undo right and now what you really want to do is you click edit type and then you duplicate this type and then you give it the actual name and for now I'm just gonna call it test wall I'm gonna click OK and I'm gonna edit that structure back to half inch so that's half inch there that's half inch there okay okay and I change this one changed this one here, when I clicked on do, it, came, it went back to the generic five. So here what I want is to select my test wall right here. So I'm gonna hit undo to get rid of this test wall. I don't really need it. Just wanted to show you how the types behave. Because again, one thing is to change the properties of the instance, which is the element that is being selected. And another thing is to change the type which will affect every single wall that has the same name 
basic wall, interior four and seven eighths partition one hour. Okay, so for now I'm gonna keep this uh, this partition. I kind of like it four and seven eighths, and let's uh, let's keep drawing. So I can grab it from here. I can take this wall here and I can extend it, right? I can copy this wall. Right, I could copy it. Say it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the beauty of it. You can copy like let's say from here to here, and then you could use the align command, which is A L for short, or you could go here under modify, and then there's the align tool right here. Align. Then you can select this exterior face, and then you tab select this exterior face, and there it is. And then you could do TR for trim, and then click here and click here, and that would trim that out. Or you could simply extend this line here. I'm doing scrolling wheel back as much as I can with my other finger, and I'm going to drop it here, All right? And then you could do create similar here, and kind of like eyeball it from here up and then do TR for trim right and then you can extend this line probably you know there are a bunch of architectural details here that I'm not going to be doing because we're not architects what I want is just to have a background that we can use to play and uh, so now let's also do some more walls here. And if I hit escape only once, then the command's still active. So notice that it's a little bit faster. Now, eh, we're missing this last wall here. But this wall's gonna be a little different, right? Because this one's, uh, I can actually select this one here, right? Since more appropriate. Notice that I on purpose didn't finish it. So I can end this one right here, and then just, I can do trim, um, TE for trim extend, and then that would cut my wall right here. And then I can simply do a line here, and a line from this exterior face to this face. And again, there's a lot of uh, butt joining here and finishing that I'm not gonna do. Um, let's add a couple of doors here. So how do you add doors? Just come here to architecture, door, and then you go, notice that if I, if I click, uh, if I hit the space bar, I'm changing the orientation of the door. So this is pretty, pretty neat. I'm going to place it here and it immediately cuts out our wall. Now I'm going to do a line, uh, click this line and this line to have it perfectly aligned. So that's my first door. I can do the same thing here with this door and then I can turn this one around. I'm gonna place it somewhere else on purpose so that I align them at the end and they come up perfectly. So we'll do this door, again this door. Oh, look at that. It actually has a snap. It actually snapped to the perfect position. So I can save a little time. So let's do this one like that. It's snapping to the correct point. So let's align the ones that I didn't. So this one here to here. And then we're missing this door here. So we can do create similar. Let's align this door right here. Let's align this door right here. And now we have a bunch of walls and a bunch of doors. So it's looking pretty good. So now would be probably a good time to drop in some column grids. So let's do that. All right, let's say the aliens calm down and they wanna mess around with your YouTube history. What are you gonna do? Can not find my video? No. What you wanna do is subscribe to the channel. You hit that bell. That way you get notifications. You know where your video is and you stick it to the aliens. So you come here under architecture, datum, 
and click on grid and then the grid head is going to appear at the, at the second point that you click on so I'm going to click here you know a random point along this line so that's one if I keep the command active I can do other lines so it's another one by default it named it two All right so I can actually take this two here and align it to this one and then create this one later because I'm going to take advantage that it's automatically numbering all those right so I'm going to do create similar and I'm going to do three for that one I'm going to go all the way to the top and then bring it down so that's three now we do four now be five now be six now you have seven eight nine and finally we have ten right now we have this one 1.1 1 .1. so let's just drop it from here to here coincidentally is 11 but we can rename this as 1.1 and then let's just adjust this column grid here and then this column grid there so we're done with our vertical column grids now we just need a couple of horizontal ones and these are letters so let's do create similar here and let's start here with A I'm going to start it from here and then I will extend it doesn't really matter so this is not 1.2, this I want it to be A. Let's see if Rabbit's smart enough to know that B is the following one. So I do create similar, CS, and then I click from here to here. There we go. So that's B. We can do C, so let's take it all the way here. Then we have D right there. Now we have E. We'll do D.1 at the end like we did the other one. So let's just grab from here to here. And this is F. F.1 we'll do later. This is G. This is H. And then we have I. And finally, we have J. Let me take it all the way out. You can adjust this one. And then that's pretty good for now. I'm going to extend this one as well align with the other ones and let's add the last two which were you know what I don't care about this grids for now I think we're good let's just add this one here and D1 so let's do from here to here and this is D.1 D.1 and extend probably up to here is enough and then we have f.1 And we're done with our column grids. And one thing I want to mention is that all this is a notative. So if I have this column grids here 
and I'm on a scale of one eighth of an inch equals one foot. Now we're to change this to a quarter inch. Notice how the lettering reduces in size because you want to keep it at a certain height at your paper space. So if I go back to one eighth of an inch, here it is. So for example, if I click here on text, I have by default three thirds seconds of an inch Arial font. If I click here and I say test, right? And I measure from here to here is about nine inches. It actually is exactly nine inches. And it's nine inches because at one eighth of an inch to one foot scale, the size of this has to be nine inches. So that in paper space, it plots at uh, three thirty seconds of an inch. So if I change this from one eighth to a quarter, then my text size gets reduced to four and a half. So if I do a reference line here, four and a half uh, inches, notice that is exactly the height of my lettering. All that to say that this is a notative. So if I come here, boom, it gets adjusted automatically. We had that also in AutoCAD MEP, but just wanted to show you in Revit. And at BIMITUP.com, you'll be able to book some exclusive training time in a variety of topics. So right here, I'm in the BIM training, and we have two different approaches. We have the Revit MEP Comprehensive, which includes every single topic in Revit that you can ever imagine. And let's say you want some information on HVAC, spacing, zoning, and cooling loads. So you can book some time right here. Or you can also use the Revit MEP professional approach, which is a little bit more to the point, is not as comprehensive as the other one, but it dives in a little bit faster. So if you want to go, let's say, an HVAC or you want plumbing, you would go on plumbing and then you can book some time in any of these topics. You can book time for yourself or for your whole staff. We share screens, we share best practices, it's very interactive. So go ahead and visit us at bimitup.com. And if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you like it down there. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.